can you see this? Yep, we can. Yes. Perfect. Yep. So sorry I'm last in all of this. Uh, this is a long talk. Um, I'm going to uh, try and make a few points uh, that uh, were not mentioned. A lot was already mentioned during the, the previous talks, so that's great. Ah, where is my controls here? Now I see a white slide. That's very interesting. How did that happen? Uh, does everyone else still, still see my screen? I, I will share. Wait. I added share a second ago. Now it's back. Interesting. Okay. I don't know. Very good. It kicked out. Yeah, got it. So anyway, so what I was going to, do, I'm going to talk about is library developments that we've been involved in. I think uh, most of you know that I'm also involved in an electronic structure code called, called Effort Frames, which is what I lead. But I'm actually interested in uh, uh, yeah, library developments that go beyond this as well. And so uh, one of the things that, that hasn't been mentioned so far that, that Alin and, and several others also are involved in is the electronic structure library of SICAM which tries to um, uh, basically provide a generic, well, I would say, distribution of libraries uh, with some support for them and, and essentially create a neutral platform you know, for doing that. And then we have the, the LC project, which we uh, have, have, have had for five years from the National Science Foundation in the US. And so this, this is essentially a, an interface that you can see on the, the right side here, which tries to connect different codes. And so this is open to any code. So the, the LC interface here is, is, is BSD3 as a, as, as a license uh, to different types of solvers. So, so our solver of choice for um, uh, matrix problems, for instance, has always been LPA simply because that is, is much more scalable than, than the typical scale APAC implementations that people compare to. I'm sure there are others, and we actually support a few others if you look at the website. In fact, we try to support as many as possible. This also addresses the, the, the problem of matrix conversion to the extent that we can, because each of these codes is a different internal format, and each of these formats is there for good reasons. So it's not really something you can just standardize on. So you need to invest into matrix conversion. And so that's what we do to get from these codes to the different solvers and back and do that all on HPC. And this supports um, well traditional distributed parallel linear algebra, uh, many core, and, and GPU, where it's supported in the, in the lower lying uh, libraries here. And then the CCAM ESL is this graph, which will come back later, which, which connects a number of libraries. And, and that is growing to a number of codes. And so, so eight codes are here. And I should say that this picture is not mine. So I did put, now how do I get further? Next slide, here we are. I did put something on the ESL, because I think it's important to understand what this is and where this is coming from. So I received an email in 2014. Uh, from Emilio Artacho that went, dear all, there will be a workshop in SICAM at Lausanne. And so SICAM indeed has been supporting this for, for six years and running, aiming to kickstart an electronic structure library, which is really a distribution of libraries. I hope you're interested. And so I thought that this would solve a, a problem that I saw for a long time, which is that we're reinventing uh, the same things. And so we wanted to get involved. We actually got NSF funding for LC uh, triggered by, by Emilio's email. So the, the LC project was directly there because I was uh, aware that we needed funding on the US side if we wanted to contribute, or else we would be happy and smile but, but not be able to do anything. And so this worked with, with Zhang Feng Lu and Lin Lin and, and Chao Yang and various others as PIs, but many more that supported this, including some in this audience here. And the, the people who, who worked on LC, I'll just briefly say, are, are all these people. Uh, Victor Yu, in particular, has been leading this with, uh, with fantastic effect. And then there's the Electronic Structure Library, which is led by Mikhail Oliveira, Jan Puyong, Fabiano Corsetti, uh, Alin is in there, and, and, and many others. Uh, so that's where this comes from. And because uh, I have limited time, I did put the fact that there are references. Please ask me before the details. So the LC. References are there as preprints, and one can read them. And hopefully, they, they give some better impression of, of what we actually try to do. And uh, thanks to a push by Mikael Oliveira and Emilio Artacho and, and many others, uh, recently, the overview paper of the SICAM Electronic Structure Library was recently submitted to Dreyfus Chem. I'm not aware that Dreyfus is, so I'm not aware that this is already on archive. But although I'm biased because I'm one of these people, I, 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 when I read the last version of the paper, I was pretty much blown away by the by the presentation of what it tries to do and what it is. So I, I really encourage everyone to, to, to at least take a look at this and see if this doesn't really um, uh, solve a problem. So this is what the, what the ESL is trying to be. And Alin can correct me now or later if, if I say anything or forget something. So I think in, in 
first of all, it really is neutral territory for library developments. It acts as a distribution. It, it doesn't act as the only distribution of libraries. Uh, it's entirely driven by voluntary commitments at this point. So it's nobody's nobody's thing that they need to justify their leadership to a uh, program manager to. And this is important. Because otherwise, we always have to justify that we lead. And so we cannot all lead. So then we have competing efforts. So it has had annual coding workshops since 2014, funded by, by, by various organizations, primarily SICAM, but Psyche, ECAM, Max were all very instrumental in keeping this going. It really tries to share effort, avoid duplication where that makes sense. Uh, has developers from very different codes that actually talk to each other, which I find particularly nice. Because while I, I, I started a code, I, I wasn't actually interested in locking myself into just working in one vertical pile of, of software forever. And so this really is something the ESL has facilitated in practice in a very nice way. And so it has at least eight large codes that were shown on the uh, slide before, but there are actually more that use the software. A number of libraries in the bundle, which is the distribution, are currently 22. And these libraries, importantly, are developed mostly outside the ESL. And the idea is that they are independent visible software projects. So the ESL bundle tries to create a manageable distribution but not to take credit. For instance, we, we should really uh, we should really look at the Cosma library. I, I was not aware of the development, and thanks, Anton, for pointing this out. And I, but yeah, this is something that we need. Uh, <laughs> we should we should do that. So this is the kind of thing that the ESL tries to be. It does not try to uh, take the credit away. This is from the the paper draft, uh, shamelessly uh, stolen, uh, just to list which libraries there are. This is a list of some that are well known. Uh, some that are utility libraries. So the general here is generic libraries that do something that is not just electronic structure. These here are specific to electronic structure uh, and various licenses. But importantly, this is used. And so this graph is deliberately, I think, uh, drawn to be uh, cross-linked everywhere because really a number of these things are used in a number of codes in different ways. And uh, that's, that's, that's growing. So then. Quickly, what is what is the, the, the LC part, which is actually the high performance part on our end, uh, trying to do something that works on current and, and, and future computing platforms. So this is very much exascale inspired. Uh, the eigenvalue problem is dominant for many things. You already know this. And in our case, the, the Elpa library has been the thing that has solved this for to a practical extent uh, in many respects. And so at least this is the benchmark I would encourage to, to, to compare to. But really, I showed this picture of LC before. And the idea is to have a matrix conversion layer and an interface layer that allows different codes, any one of them, to connect to different solvers in a simple way. And this is essentially because we had that problem before I knew of any solution to this for FHI Ames. And I knew we needed this layer. And this layer is used by Siesta and DFTB Plus, I think, at this point, by DGGFT. And this is open to others. We've actually talked to some people from Crystal. And I think this was a human time issue. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, to not get there, but but this would be this would be a useful interface. And importantly, there are about nine or ten solvers supported there, and this is agnostic of where the solver comes from. Who writes it? As long as it's a good solver, we would just want to have uh, fast solvers uh, that work for us. There is also, I should say, a reverse communication interface that tries to implement. Um, iterative solvers for plain wave DFT codes, but also for other problems in a way that does not take away the uh, parallelism of the original code. So this you can only do in a reverse communication way uh, by keeping the struct data structures of the original code intact and giving the instructions that, that, that drive a, an iterative solver efficiently. And then uh, I'll go quickly through this because this is really just there because I uploaded the presentation and you can look at it later. There are benchmarks. And, and one thing that this enables you to do is uh, to compare different solvers on, on pretty much equal footing. So for instance, uh, it, if you, if you look at different 1D, 2D, 3D problems in electronic structure theory, in this case with FHI Ames basis sets, you see that for 1D, PEXI, uh, pole expansion selective inversion, the density matrix solver significantly beats ALPA, whereas for 3D systems, uh, it's somewhat the opposite. You can do the same thing uh, with DFTB plus uh, matrices. So here you have an order N solver, the anti-poly library, which is really a sparse matrix algebra library, uh, and that will that would be significant faster than significantly faster for, than any of the others for these matrices and for 3D HDO, for instance. And you can go on with this. Um, there is also a GPU effort. So Victor Yu and, and others have just uh, gotten the two-step uh, ALPA 
uh, version uh, working on Summit, and this actually works. And so this significantly improves the scalability of distributed parallel linear algebra and GPU architectures in our view. So this actually works, especially for large matrices. For small matrices or for smaller node counts, you can see that one step algorithm or so beats this. But at least, at least we have something to go by here, and so we're quite excited about that. Uh, and then, then finally, LC itself is also supposed to have a decision layer at some point that actually helps users choose the right solver. I, I went quickly about this because really I wanted to, to say that, that, that this is hopefully something that, that is at least worth looking at uh, in terms of different solvers and connecting them and, and creating interfaces that work on real HPC. And the electronic structure library, I think, is also really an effort to uh, connect to. Because this is really a platform that, that is already used by, by, by quite a variety of codes that's grown organically and that really serves as neutral ground, including to tackle HPC problems. And so this is, in my view, complementary to and, and compatible with a lot of related efforts rather than trying to usurp and, and, and replace them. So thank you very much for your attention and, and for, for listening up to here. Thank you, Volker. Very, very good that you've uh, got through.